Welcome to Podfix Galore. I'm your horrible online reader, Goldskyth. I read out loud fanfictions for you, busy bees, free of charge and no strings attached. Today, I will continue reading the Silmarillion slash Lord of the Rings fic by Bloodwing Blackbird from Archive of Our Own called And Now Each Night I Count the Stars. I hope you can at least try to enjoy my voice and I will try my best for you with the equipment available to me. Note, this fic is rated explicit. On with the show. And now each night I count the stars. Chapter 26 An Epilogue It was a familiar scene, a wandering minstrel entertaining a room full of travellers while a ranger watches from the corner. The minstrel is a strange bird, old but young, with a voice rasping and harsh, the fingers that sing for him. He stoops and he limps, and if it had been a disguise once, it is no longer. When they arrive, Barlaman greets Hullbutter with a curled lip, and then promptly forgets about him when he spots Mucklot lurking at his shoulder. Mucklot doesn't have his hood or his scarves to hide his face anymore, just his old hat, which does precious little to hide what he is, and nothing at all to hide the mark of the eye, frightening even this far north. Hullbutter had offered his hood, knowing how little Mucklot liked to be known, but evidently that, too, was a thing that had changed. Alparat needn't have worried. He watches Parliament's face travel from surprised awe to fright, and then all the way to delighted recognition. And the innkeeper hooks his thumbs in his braces, rocks back his heels, and says, Well, now, look at here, Bob. This is our brilliant blackbird. He leans close and taps his nose. We're giving up your foot in. Mokler looks desperately at Alparat, who shrugs and smiles. Not yet. Mugler croaks as he's hailed enthusiastically by Nob. Bob looks out from the door, sees Mugler, goes pale, and scurries away. Hullbottom gives up all hope of ever learning what Mugler did to frighten the poor man so. They sit him up in a chair atop a table, and Barlaman commits himself to making certain that his mug is never empty and calls for quiet. Mugler sits still, outwardly serene, eyes on the distance. It's meant to look like part of the performance, and maybe Hullbottom would have been taken in once. But no longer. He sees the way Mokler is turned inward, gathering himself, sees how stiff he sits, and he thinks how strange it is to see him here again in his bright barred plumage, the most somber things that Glorfindel's wardrobe could offer, according to Mokler. How strange it is that Mokler has agreed to play, unmasked, and then Mokler moves, and he seeks out Hullbottom's eyes, and he smiles. And maybe that is the strangest of all. If only because it isn't. So he found you, then, says Aragorn, sliding into a seat beside him and squinting at the crowd gathered around Maklor. He did? I suppose he had your help. Aragorn pulls out his pipe. I passed him on the greenway on my way to Southern Forend a few weeks ago. I thought you'd be north of the road, so I sent him along to your blacksmith friend. Well, but at nods, he had heard a bit about Makro's visit in Archet, and he wonders if the story is very different in Maddie's telling. I don't wish to worry you, but he seemed, how shall I say this, lost? He may have been, said Halbarad. Did he know you? I'm not certain. Halbarad smiles. Don't feel too bad. He doesn't know me either. Otacorn frowns at that. That is, he considers, concerning. Halbara doesn't lie. Yes, he tells me he's not safe. What do you think? It changes nothing for me, but I'll not share your secrets unless you say I may. You may need to introduce yourself again in any case, and I shall take my cue from you. I think it will go more smoothly this time, but let us not stalk him to his lodging again. Aragorn laughs. That was a mistake, he concedes. He intends to stay, then. I don't think I can spare you for any more rescue missions. Hmm? said Halbarad, pulling himself back from the music that made even the prancing pony feel like a place from a tale. Oh, yes, did I not say that? Where I am, you shall find him. He toys with a little circle of spilled ale, smearing it about the table with his finger. When the time comes, we'll be both at your side. For a while, at least. For many years. Aragorn says, 
searching Halbada's face in that intense way that he had. They had had this conversation before. Halbada did not like to lie, but neither did Arakon like it when he spoke too much of his dreams. For as long as I can, says Halbada, before turning his attention back to the music. I miss the harp, but I'm coming to enjoy the loot. He watches until Makar notices and tips his head at him. Arakorn accepts the change of subject. I'm still not entirely certain that I understand how this came to be, he said, looking between Maklor and Halbarad. Halbarad watches the light play across Maklor's face as he bends his head to draw forth a glistening cascade of notes from the strings. Halbarad had spent the last two days listening to his complaints of his poor skills on the instrument. I don't pretend to understand it myself, but I am glad of it. I do. I would not have my captain left alone again. Is it soon, do you think? Shadows dance upon Aragorn's face. I have had no word from Gandalf since May. But there are rumors on the road. Well, things are moving. How about it? And the hobbits are to leave soon. If Gandalf has not returned, they will not make it to Rivendell without help. I also will not leave the north unwatched. Not until the need is greater elsewhere, at least. We will keep the watch until you send for us. After an hour of playing, the crowd allows Makler to stop. He weaves his way through the crowd, and his hands are clasped, his shoulders thumped. By the time he reaches them, Halbarn can see that he's tired, and that his face is pinched and pale. He gropes at the pocket where Halbarn knows he's given the little flask of spirits, then he leaves it there. That could have gone worse, he says when he has settled himself in the chair beside Halbarad. You seem satisfied, says Aragorn. It has been a long time since I had an audience, I suppose, or... Something twists closed in his face. Maybe not so long. So long since I've had a kind audience, he amends, and the moment passes. Well, I can say that the musical offerings in the Freeland were poorer in your absence, says Aragorn. Standing. I am glad to see you about again, and not only because my kinsman is so inexplicably fond of you. He touches his brow. I am afraid that I shall fall asleep if I stay any longer. A good night to you both. So that is the heir to the throne of Gondor, asks Maklor as Aragorn speaks to the innkeeper about something. It is. I thought you didn't remember him. Hmm? No, him I remember. There's too much song about him to forget. Besides, I've spent enough time with Arwen of late. I think I would know him even if we hadn't truly never met. He has not looked away from Aragorn. We are on the edge of something. A great story of the age, maybe. Do you think we'll have a part to play? A small one, maybe. Makhlod laughed. That'll be a nice change. There's a freedom in it, isn't there? Halbaran has never been near the center of a story and is glad of it. There is, even if I won't see the end of this one. Maklor turns to him, his eyes very bright. He does not chide him or turn him away from the thought, and for that Halbaran is grateful. I will make sure that you are in the song of these days, he says, and has the air of promise. Halbaran laughs and holds out a hand to Maklor, who takes it, almost smiling. Not too much, though. Five lines tops, and not even worth including the index. If that is what you wish. I was writing a song. The bull and the blackbird, but maybe I'll keep it for myself. Albara does not say that Makar had already written such a song. He wonder if this one will be very different. What of you? Albara asks. What will the song say about your own deeds? I asks Maglor, and he leans his head upon Halbarad's shoulder. I've been in too many songs already. This time, I shall not be in it at all. End of chapter 26, and end of, and now each night I count the stars. Thank you for this journey. We'll meet in part two, the holes they leave. I'm not abandoning you, or the story. Thank you to Bloodwing Blackbird for letting me do this. I'm Goldscythe, catch you later. Stay tuned.